Kitty entered a bookstore to get some art supplies. At one point, she met an elf and accidentally stepped on his foot. Ow! The elf got very angry and teleported her to his fairy world. He said, I'm Noah. Welcome to my world, you ill-mannered lady. If you can solve all my riddles, I'll help you find your way home. But if you don't, you'll turn into a tree and stay in this enchanted forest forever. So here comes the first riddle. Jen and Dobby have four daughters, and each of the daughters also has a brother. How many people are there in the family? Kitty cracked this riddle easily. What about you? The correct answer is seven. Noah took Kitty to the elf village. There they met Mr. Rosbury. He was very upset. Someone had stolen all berries from his trees. Noah suggested Kitty should find the thief. She questioned four suspects. Alice said, I'm allergic to berries and stay away from them. Mia said that she'd been busy all morning helping her granny pick apples in her garden. Javier confessed that he had been on a secret date. He refused to reveal the name of his girlfriend. And Fiona said, Are you kidding? I love my manicure too much to spoil it by picking berries. So, who's the thief? Alice. She's eating strawberry ice cream, which means she lied about her allergy. Next, Noah took Kitty for a walk through a magic field. There are 50 cows in this field, and 28 chickens. How many didn't? Kitty figured this riddle out immediately. What about you? The correct answer is 30. It's a play on words. 20 cows ate chickens, which means that 30 cows didn't. The guy's next stop was a jewelry store. The local jeweler, Jonas, had just finished making a beautiful diamond necklace. He put it on the window so that everyone could admire his masterpiece and left for lunch. But when he returned, the necklace was gone. Surprise, surprise. Kitty questioned three suspects. The jeweler's assistant, David, said, I was cleaning silver in the next room and didn't hear anyone enter the store. Billy, who owned a chocolate store one floor below, said, I've spent the entire day with my wife. We've been celebrating our 15th anniversary. And Nina, the cleaning lady, said, I've been cleaning the roof and singing when the crime happened. I didn't hear anything. Who's the thief? Billy. Look at his selfie with his wife. She's wearing the stolen necklace. Okay, but how did he steal it? He has a book, Magic Portals, on the shelf in his store. A postman found an elderly stargazer, Mr. Green, unconscious on the floor in his own house. Kitty questioned the key suspect, Mike. He was the only person who had been seen near Mr. Green's house the day before. Kitty asked him what he had been doing the previous night. Mike replied, I spent the whole evening helping my friend to build a house. We finished late at night. I was passing by Mr. Green's house on my way home. I looked into the window and saw him lying on the floor. I was shocked and called the police. Kitty inspected the house and told the officer to arrest Mike. Why? Mr. Green was found on the ground floor. But his house doesn't have any ground floor windows, which means Mike couldn't see anything through the window. Noah took Kitty to his garden. He said that elf gardens were a little different compared to human ones. Kitty noticed five weird details right away. Can you see them too? It's snowing, but the flowers are blooming. The trees don't cast any shadows, but Kitty does. The rainbow in the sky is upside down. All squirrels are wearing suits. They usually don't do that in human forests. And this butterfly is talking on the phone. Noah invited Kitty for dinner, but they gotta cook it first. 
He gave Kitty an old recipe and said she could find all the ingredients in the garden. But the recipe is coded with the help of these symbols. Can you help Kitty find all the ingredients? Here comes the first one. It's a potato, and it's hiding over here. Here's the second ingredient. Olives! They're growing over there. What about this puzzle? Any ideas? Cabbage. It's over there. Can you recognize this one? Coconut. Here it is. The next one. Can you crack it? Pineapple. Great job. What about this puzzle? It's a carrot. And since it's an elf's garden, carrots are growing on trees. Can you crack this code? It's a peach, and Kitty can get it over there. Here comes the next ingredient. Any ideas? Pepper. It's over there. And last but not least, can you crack it? Broccoli. Great job! There's only one broccoli head in this garden, and it's hiding over there. After a delicious dinner, Noah offered Kitty to choose a guest room. He gave her three options, but only one of them was safe. Option number one, a soft bed in the attic. Here's the second option, a cozy sofa in the basement. And the third option is a hammock on an open balcony. Unfortunately, mutant mosquitoes arrive every night. Their poison is safe for elves, but not for humans. Which room should Kitty choose? Springs stick out of the first bed. That doesn't look safe. And the sofa is full of bed bugs. Probably not the best company for a sleepover. So Kitty should choose the hammock. She can use this mosquito net to hide from the annoying insects. Next morning, Noah had an appointment. He offered Kitty to meet later in a fancy elf cafe. Four waiters welcomed her when she arrived there. But one of them was fake. Can you guess who? See? This guy is a criminal. Noah was late, so Kitty ordered breakfast without him and went to the bathroom. The girl left her bag and her wallet on the table. Don't ask me why. When she came back, Noah was sitting at the table. Her food had arrived and her bag was still there. But the money was missing from her wallet. The restaurant security found three suspects. Noah said that he had just arrived. He hadn't seen anything suspicious. The waitress said, I brought the food, but I didn't touch the wallet. The cleaner said that she'd wiped the table, but hadn't touched the wallet. The guard found some fingerprints on the wallet, but they all belonged to Kitty. So, who stole the money? The cleaner. She had her gloves on. That's why she didn't leave any fingerprints. Kitty didn't have any elf money, so Noah offered to pay for her meal. But first, she had to crack this riddle. What begins with T, ends with T, and has T in it. Kitty solved this puzzle easily. What about you? The correct answer is a teapot.
Kitty found a beautiful diamond tiara on the sink in the ladies' room while she was washing her hands. Three elves showed up to claim it. Jim said, This tiara belongs to my mother. We've been passing it on from generation to generation for ages. I noticed that it was gone after visiting the bathroom. Fiona said that she had won this tiara in a beauty contest. She even showed Kitty a picture. Jessica said, If this tiara is missing one small emerald, then it's mine. I lost the gem at a party last summer. Kitty gave the tiara to Jessica. Why? Well, Jim wouldn't have been allowed in the ladies' room. The stones in Fiona's tiara are blue, not green. And Jessica was the only one who knew about the defect. Kitty entered an elf gift store to get some souvenirs for her family. Three magic creatures entered the store after her. Everything was fine until, suddenly, Kitty heard a loud scream. She turned around and saw an elf lying face down on the table. She quickly called the police and reported the incident. An officer arrived and asked the other three customers what they'd been doing when they heard the scream. The goblin said, I was picking out postcards from the front display. The mermaid was chasing the perfect souvenir mug. She dropped it when she screamed. The pieces were still on the floor. And the wizard said, I was checking my horoscope on my phone. I'm a Venus by Zodiac, you know. My astrologist promised that today would be the most peaceful day of my life. Yeah, right. Can you help Kitty find the criminal? It's the wizard. Venus isn't an astrological sign. The police arrested the wizard. He got so mad at Kitty that he turned her into a frog. Noah tried all the spells from his books, but nothing helped. So he took Kitty to the jail to beg for the wizard's help. There, Noah saw two prisoners. He knew for sure that only one of them would manage to escape. Who? The second one. He has a spoon without a handle. He must have used it to make a knife to open the door. The wizard agreed to lift his spell. But he had one condition. The guys had to crack his riddle. How many months of the year have 28 days? Can you help Kitty out? The correct answer is all of them. Noah took Kitty to the local magic store. Kitty asked him what he wanted to buy. Noah answered this way. It's tall when it's young, and it's short when it's old. What is it? Have you guessed? It's a candle. Noah lit the candle and prepared to send Kitty back to the human world. But he had one last riddle for her. Kitty had to say a secret number code to get home. Here's a hint. The code contains three positive numbers. You can either add these numbers or multiply them. The result will be the same. What are these numbers? The correct answer is 1, 2, and 3. Great job! Brandon is the brightest student in his college. The next evening after graduation, he received this mysterious letter. The note said, We have a job for you. He turned the note around and saw this message. Brandon cracked this encoded puzzle right away. What about you? Brandon's job interview will take place in a greenhouse at midnight. Brandon arrived at the meeting point. He looked around and saw a gardener lying unconscious on the floor. Brandon called the police. Experts said that someone had poisoned the gardener. Brandon called three people and questioned what they were doing today. Allie, the gardener's assistant, said, Today was my day off. I've spent all my time at a pool party with my friends. The gardener's wife, Lily, said, Oh my, I can't visit him immediately. I'm on a business trip in Rome. And the gardener's boss, Dan, said, 
I had lunch with him today, and he looked perfectly fine. Brandon spotted who was lying right away. What about you? Lily is lying. Take a look at her hotel window. Can you see the Eiffel Tower? She's not in Rome, but in Paris. After solving this case, Brandon received a message. Congratulations, you've passed the first stage. See you in the basement. Brandon went downstairs and faced this combination lock. Now he needs to open the door to move on to the next level of his job interview. Can you help him crack the code? Take a look at the note near the door. It's a hint. The correct password is opinion. Brandon entered a huge office and saw this guy. He said, Nice to meet you, Brandon. I'm Mr. Green. My wife and I have six sons. Each son has one sister. Can you count all members of my family? Brandon nailed it right away. What about you? Nine, Mr. Green, Mrs. Green, six sons and one daughter. The daughter is a sister to all six sons. Brandon's next task is to solve a robbery case. Last night, someone smashed a window in the local bank office to break in. The cleaner was inside, so he ran to call for help. He saw that the robbers had taken the money and busted the door open to escape when he got back. He tried to clean the mess and some glass fragments got stuck in his sleeves. Brandon looked over the crime scene. He knew for sure that the cleaner was lying. But what exactly gave him away? The window glass, the door, or the cleaner's appearance? The door frame was broken outwards, indicating that whoever was inside broke out, which fits the story. The glass can shatter in all directions. Still, not enough evidence to prove that the cleaner's lying, but his arms are covered in glass. He did say that he was cleaning up, but those tiny shards indicate he was standing very close to the window when it was broken. And, probably, he was the one who had smashed it. After solving this case, Brandon received the next task, to make this equation correct by moving just one matchstick. Do you have any ideas? In fact, there are three possible answers. Okay, let's see. 8 minus 4 equals 4. 5 plus 4 equals 9. And 0 plus 4 equals 4. Mr. Green offered Brandon to look through some crime scene photos. Brandon asked him, In which one of these buildings is the new crime scene? Mr. Green said, The closest one. All right. Can you help him spot which of these buildings is closer? This building has blocked out the pattern of railings on the right-hand building. Therefore, it's closer. And if you look very attentively, you can also see the satellite dish obscuring the other building. To accomplish the next task, Brandon needs a laptop. Can you help him enter the correct password? Here's a clue. It's a five-letter word that includes two different vowels and three similar consonants. It's so strong that it can spoil your entire work. Can you guess the word? It's an error. Brandon saw this picture on the screen. His task is to spot which direction the car is moving, left or right. Can you help him? Neither right nor left. The car isn't moving because it doesn't have any wheels. Here's the next task for Brandon. Mr. Green bought a phone for $100. Then he sold it to Sam for $125. After a year, he bought it back from Sam for $150. After using it for a month, he sold it back to Sam for $175. 
Can you calculate if this entire deal was profitable for Mr. Green? In the first deal, Mr. Green made a profit of $25 from Sam. Mr. Green got a $25 profit again from Zach in the second deal. Therefore, the entire deal was profitable for Mr. Green, and he made a total profit of $50. Brandon woke up in a forest. He wandered around for a while and met these three ladies. They all claimed that they had gotten lost in the woods two months ago. Can you spot any liars among them? The easiest way to solve this task is to look at their hair. The first lady has long blonde hair with brown roots, which means that she hasn't been to the hairdresser for a while. The third lady has naturally black hair, which has probably been growing out the same way. But the second lady has a fresh haircut and green colored roots, which means she has recently visited a hairdresser. Therefore, she's probably a criminal trying to blend in with the others to hide from justice. After a short walk, Brandon found a huge villa in the forest. The owner of this villa was just found unconscious. Brandon has to examine the crime scene and determine the possible suspects. Ooh. Three housekeepers, Mary, Wendy, and Jane, were the only people who were around at the time when the owner felt sick. What? Strangely, they all had red stains on their hands. Hmm. Mary said, These stains on my outfit are just red paint. I was painting the benches in the garden. Wendy said, my stains are from the nail polish. And Jane said that she had spilled grape juice on her uniform. Can you spot any liars? Take a closer look at the grape juice Jane is holding. As you can see from the label, it's a white grape juice. That drink wouldn't leave a red stain. Also, all benches in the garden are blue, which means Mary had lied. After lunch, Brandon fell asleep. He woke up and found himself in jail. He began to look for a way out and found three doors. The first exit is guarded by angry dogs. They haven't eaten for nine months, so they're very hungry. The second exit is guarded by a family of dragons. And finally, a group of guards is waiting behind the third door. No prisoner can escape from them. Which exit should Brandon choose? He should choose the first way. If the dogs haven't eaten for nine months, they're probably too weak to stop Brandon from escaping. Brandon and Mr. Green entered an elevator to get to the final step of the interview. Brandon spotted three odd things about this elevator right away. What about you? The eighth floor is missing. The mirror reflects Brandon but it doesn't remember Mr. Green. The sign says that this elevator's weight limit is zero pounds. Mr. Green took Brandon to his office and showed him his jewelry collection. Mr. Green said, I have one final puzzle for you. If you solve it, you're hired. When I was your age, I collected white gems in the mountains and brought them home every evening. When I've accumulated enough gems, I decided to sell them. The local jeweler said, I'm ready to buy your gems. How many stones do you have? So I began to calculate. I bought a huge box that contained three mini boxes, and two of them had another mini box inside. So if the huge box can hold 50 gems, how many blue gems did I sell to the jeweler? Brandon nailed it and got the job. What was his reply? Mr. Green was collecting white gems, so he couldn't sell any blue gems to the jeweler. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. One famous magician is performing on the stage. He's going to show his most spectacular trick. But unfortunately, only one viewer has come to the show. The magician puts eight different cards on the table and covers them with a black cloth. He asks the viewer to come closer. Now you'll see two rows of four cards. 
I want you to select only one of them, but very quickly. Ready? The magician says. He lifts the cloth for one second, then covers the cards again. The viewer has chosen one card. The magician looks at him and whispers, Now close your eyes. Think about the card. Think of nothing else. I'm going to read your mind now. The spectator closes his eyes. After a few seconds, the magician tells him, Look at the table. I've removed your card and replaced it with a new one. The guy opens his eyes and it's magic. The magician has indeed removed the card he thought about. But how did he do it? There's no magic here. The magician replaced all the cards on the table with new ones. But the viewer didn't notice this since he was only focused on one card. Johnny is on a deserted island. He walks through the jungle and finds an old treasure chest. But as soon as he touches it, three zombie pirates come out from behind the trees. We've been protecting this gold for 500 years. You won't take it, one of them says. Johnny notices that something is wrong with these guys. They seem fake. But why? This pirate is wearing sneakers, see? The second one has a phone in his pocket. And the third pirate has a price tag attached to his saber. A famous courier service hires new staff. To get the job, candidates need to take a package and run a marathon in three hours. They easily cope with this task. Then, the boss asks them to swim the distance of the Olympic pool. One of the candidates stops halfway through the distance to take a breath. He drops out of the race. It leaves us with three participants. Now they have to pass a test in nuclear physics. Only two candidates make no mistakes. The third guy fails. And the last task is to conquer Everest. And here they are, climbing to the top. Remind me, what salary do they offer? One of them asks. $20 per hour, the second candidate answers. Finally, they get to the peak and meet the boss there. He looks at them and says, You both have made it so far, but I'll hire only one of you. Who will get this job? The first candidate. He's still carrying the package he got before the marathon. Two powerful film producers are having a breakfast in an expensive restaurant. They discuss the budget for a sequel to a very successful movie that got $500 million at the box office. They speak very quietly since they mention important details of the script. They suspect that someone might overhear them. The producers are right. Some curious people are indeed eavesdropping on their conversation. Find them. There's a guy at the table holding a magazine upside down. Obviously, he isn't reading it. He must be listening to the producers. That girl over there is a journalist. There's a camera lens sticking out of her backpack. See? She will post a video and fans will be able to read the producer's lips. That man is eating a salad, but you can notice a microphone hidden in his long hair. Three people are standing in front of an ice cream cart. The first guy is taking a cone from the cellar. The guy behind him is nervous. His hands are in his pockets. The third guy is looking at something through binoculars. Which of them is a police officer? Look at the first guy. He's got a police radio in his pocket. Where's my money? The owner of a diner screams. It's 30 minutes till the end of the working day, but there's no money in the cash register. Three employees have been working today, but they swear they haven't touched the money. They say there have been no clients in the diner. The boss doesn't believe them. He studies the employees, trying to figure out who's the thief. Linda is wearing a pair of sunglasses, jeans, and a stylish t-shirt. She also has an expensive phone. Michael is dressed in costly designer clothes. Sarah is wearing a regular jacket and a long skirt. Who do you think has stolen the money? They're all telling the truth. Look at the sign on the door. Open, it says. 
This means people passing by the diner see the closed sign. The employees forget to turn it over, and that's why there have been no clients. Michael is walking down a long road. He's sweaty, hungry, and thirsty. There are no cars around, and his phone isn't working. Michael takes a few more steps and sits down on the road. He can't walk anymore. At this moment, he hears a vehicle approaching. A big bus appears on the road. It stops by Michael. Its doors open, but Michael doesn't get inside. He notices a car and a motorbike approaching. They stop by him too. All the drivers offer to give Michael a ride. What should he choose? The bus seems normal, but one of its tires is flat. The trip won't last long. Look at the biker. His face is hidden by a helmet, but he has hooves instead of feet. Mike chooses the car. One video blogger has been walking across a desert for several hours. The guy has no water left and he's losing strength, but his camera battery is fully charged. He climbs a small hill and sees three lakes, but not all of them are real. Help the blogger to identify illusions. He has a video camera. He should film the lakes. Mirages can't be recorded. A biker is traveling along a country road when he hears a scream. A woman is calling for help. She seems to be in the forest. The biker drives in her direction and sees three girls among trees. They're all begging to save them from a vampire. But which of you is the vampire? The man asks. It's her! The girl screams and points at one another. How can the biker find out who is human? There are two side mirrors on the motorcycle. The biker needs to turn the handlebars to check which girl has a reflection. Martin likes visiting abandoned factories and other buildings. Today, he's going to check a huge deserted shopping mall located on a remote island. According to some legends, the Minotaur lives inside the building. The creature looks like a human with a bull's head. Of course, Martin doesn't believe that. He takes a flashlight, a warm blanket, and a night vision camera. It's dark and cold inside. Martin hears a strange noise coming from the corridor. He shines a flashlight and sees the Minotaur. The monster looks angry. It aims its horns at Martin. What should the guy do? Faster! The bull is about to attack! Remember that blanket that Martin took with him? The guy should throw it at the monster's muzzle to confuse the creature and escape. Michelle is in front of a locked door. An axe, a hammer, and a drill, and several other tools lie nearby. The girl tries to break down the door with the axe, but the door is metallic. Then, she tries to knock the door out with the hammer, and again, no result. Don't try to force it open. There's an easier way, a creepy voice says. Michelle tries to open the door by turning the handle, but it doesn't work either. What else can she do? Michelle should knock on the door. Starry sky, fresh cool air, endless dunes, a small campfire, and a tent. This place is a fairy tale. Sarah has always wanted to spend a night in a desert. She takes pictures of the stars, drinks hot tea from a thermos, and enjoys life. It's a perfect night. Too perfect. A smile disappears from Sarah's face. Everything is not real. Two signs indicate that Sarah is sleeping right now. What are these signs? Two moons are shining in the sky. A sea crab is looking at Sarah from the sand. But it's scorpions that usually live in deserts, not sea crabs. Mary opens her eyes and realizes that she's in an unknown place. The last thing she remembers is walking in the park and then darkness. There's a lot of trash in the room. A red lamp is flashing from the ceiling. Something must have happened here. Mary can leave through the door. It's open. But wait, she needs to take some useful stuff from the room. But what? She can only choose two items. Which ones?
Mary needs to get scuba gear and a mask. Look at that small window. Fish are swimming by. Mary is underwater. Alex returns to his top floor apartment after a workout at the gym. He turns on his stove to cook some soup. When he's having lunch, someone knocks on the door. These are water utility workers. They say that the ceiling in Alex's apartment is about to collapse because his neighbors forgot to turn off a faucet. And now they're flooding the building. They ask the guy to evacuate immediately. Alex closes the door and calls the police. He's sure those two are thieves. How has Alex figured that out? He lives on the top floor. No one can flood him. Well, you've tried to get into the secret supernatural service your whole life. Now there's just one step left to reach that goal. You need to pass an exam to prove you can handle the supernatural and paranormal. Keep track of how many answers you get right. Your results await at the end. A helicopter leaves you on the shore. Your mission? Get to the other side of the island where the lifeboat will arrive for you. Seems easy enough on an island this small, but here's the catch. A few people and a lot of supernatural monsters are the only inhabitants of this island. You see three roads with signs near each of them. The first leads to vampires. The second road takes you to zombies. The third one leads to alligators. Which road do you choose? You have 10 seconds to decide. Choose the road to alligators. As I said, only people and monsters live on the island. No real-world creatures here. You take the third road and end up in a huge meadow. The scorching sun is beating down on you, and you want to find some shade. Fortunately, you see two houses ahead. The first looks very old and decrepit. The windows are broken. It's missing most of its shutters, and it looks like the whole thing could collapse at any minute. The second house looks brand new, sturdy, clean, but you notice it doesn't have any windows at all. Where will you go? 10 seconds on the clock. On this strange island, the second house without windows is a sure sign that the inhabitant is afraid of sunlight. You don't want to land in the trap of vampires. You choose the first house. You find yourself in a large room. Everything's covered in cobwebs. A thick layer of dust coats the furniture, and the floor is creaky. You find a can on the table. All it says is, antidote. You're sure this could be useful, so you put it in your pocket. You also find a bunch of keys and go to the far end of the room. There are three doors before you. The first door has several locks on it, but the keys you found will open them. The second door clearly says, werewolf inside. There are no signs on the third door, and it looks inviting, clean, and cobweb-free. Which door do you choose? Your 10 seconds starts now. The locks on the first door mean there must be someone or something kept inside that shouldn't be let out. Better not open it. If the third door has no webs or dust on it, then someone must use it regularly. It's likely the werewolf lives there. So you choose the second door. The exit leads you to a park with trees and shrubs. It's strange how quaint it looks for a place like this. You see a group of seven people ahead. They also look totally normal, but as soon as you come closer, you notice there's definitely something off about a few of them. They're zombies. How can you identify them? Careful, they might spot you. You have only seven seconds now. The right answer is three. 
The guy is trying to find his eyes that fell out. The girl on the bench is eating ice cream with body parts in it. And this man doesn't even notice the dog biting his leg. You're afraid of zombies as much as the next guy. But the really scary thing is those people standing nonchalantly nearby. Anyway, you discreetly pass by this strange crew and eventually come to a mountain. You climb to the top and enjoy the view of a beautiful sunset. To move on, you need to cross one of the two bridges. Strangers are standing at the other end of each one. You're sure one of them is a werewolf. But who is it? How can you tell? Looks like those zombies caught your scent. Hurry, you only have seven seconds. You've watched the sunset, which means it'll get dark soon. Tonight is a full moon, so you'll be able to see which of these people will turn into a werewolf. You've crossed the safe bridge. It's nighttime, but the bright full moon illuminates the path for you. You see a huge castle ahead. You're sure ghosts live there, but you don't care. It's better to face ghosts than stay outside with all these other creatures. You enter the castle and find yourself at a ball. Eight people with masks are dancing. You realize this is a test of your attentiveness. How many of these people are ghosts? Seven seconds until you're spotted. That lady is dancing, but her feet aren't touching the floor. She's floating. Everyone is wearing modern dresses and costumes. But that couple over there is dressed as if they're from the Victorian era. Ghosts can't change clothes, right? You've spotted three ghosts, and you decide not to interfere with their dance. Gotta keep moving on. You come to another room. You see a huge table with a buffet of food, fried chicken, french fries, pizza, vegetables, fruit, soda, mouth-watering desserts and pastries. Eight people are sitting at the table. You've worked up quite an appetite by now and consider having a bite. But intuition tells you something is wrong here. You realize these are all vampires. But how did you know? You better decide in five seconds. Why is all the food on the table untouched? Does anyone in this room really want to eat? Oh, they definitely want to dine, but not on ordinary food. They want your blood. Hurry, run! You book it out of there, but the vampires pursue you. To be saved, you need to choose one of three rooms along the way. There's a huge fire in the first room. A pit with sharp spears at the bottom awaits you in the second. The third room is filled with poisonous gas. Which one will you choose? Hurry, they'll be here in five seconds. The correct answer is the room with the gas. If you breathe in the poisonous stuff, the vampires won't drink your toxic blood. But how will you save yourself? Oh, that's right. Earlier, you found an antidote. You drink it, fully recover, and leave the mansion. You go through the jungle and finally find the shore. Perfect, you've reached your goal. That's when your joy is cut short by the sight of three people flailing out in the water. Help! We can't swim! You're about to dive in the water to save them, but your intuition tells you something's fishy here. Two of them are sea monsters trying to lure you into a trap. But which ones? You only have five seconds to save the real person. One of them has webbed fingers, and that one's gills are visible. But that guy over there still needs your help. So you save him and head back to the shore. You make a fire to keep warm. That's when a bright beam of light shines on you from the sky. It's the helicopter here to pick you up after the test. Hooray! It throws a rope ladder down. You start to approach it, but then you realize something's not right. Do you climb up or do you trust your instincts? You better decide in five seconds. Helicopter? A lifeboat was supposed to arrive for you, remember? 
You don't board the helicopter, but unfortunately, your new friend did. The chopper quickly darts away into the stars. Yes, it was a UFO. That's when the lifeboat arrives. Congrats, you made it off the island. But is your score enough to pass the test? Zero to three points. You'd have a rough time lasting in the secret supernatural service. You need to train your attention to detail and decision-making skills. Don't worry, you'll get better with practice. Four to seven points. You're quite smart and resourceful, but you'll still have some fine-tuning to do in the service. Even if you're usually good at decision-making and not succumbing to panic, one slip-up could cost you. Eight to ten points. You passed with flying colors. The Secret Supernatural Service will be honored to have such a survival expert among their ranks. Nice job, but don't get too overconfident. You still need to stay on high alert in this field.